Hi. I think participants will be coming in from time to time. Uh, we are still in the practice session. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, I can't find the shit. I, I can't suddenly can't find the live button. What happened? Huh? <laughs> hey. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Try to assign me or kindly to Okay, I'll assign you. Uh Donnie, I'll assign you. You have a look. Yeah, it shows that the webinar has started. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, welcome to this session. I think our partic participants are flowing in. Um, so we, um, we will let attendees to join. Probably we wait for like a couple of minutes, like one to two minutes in order to have all our particip participants to join in first. All right, yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, hi to those that just came in. Hello. Hi, welcome to this session. I'm Kylie from AECC. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so if let's say you can hear uh, hear me clearly, would you mind to put um, in the chat box that you can hear me clearly? Um, yes, hi. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, how are you? Oh, that's great. Yeah. Good to have everyone's respond that you can hear us clearly. Um, so probably we wait for another one more minute, then we will start this session. All right. Yep. Hi. Thanks, Victor. Thanks, Shamin and Idana. Idina. Yep. That's good to know. Everyone can hear us clearly. Okay, that's really good. Thanks. Thanks everyone for the um, response. Okay. Hi. Hi everyone. I'm Kylie from AECC Global. I'm one of the education counselor with AECC. Welcome everyone to the first episode of Study This or That. Um, this topic we will be talking about today is Route to Russell Group and Modern Universities in UK. So for this World Tour series, I believe that you'll come across this, a series of topics and also workshops. So we have collaborated with 37 institute and partners um, involving 90 universities across four countries involving UK, Australia, US and Canada to help us to understand and also provide this webinar session to all participants. So in total, we have 21 talks and three workshops. So if let's say you are looking for a pathway to study um, foundation, bachelor degree, master's degree or even credit transfer this will be the session for you all right so um, at the moment we have um, uh, we understand that for this um, session we do have participants from in, uh, Indonesia from Malaysia and Singapore so welcome everyone okay um, before we start this session uh, we would like to let you know that ACC Global is actually a university placement agency that specializes in overseas education so um, do follow us at our um, social media our social media platforms such as Facebook Instagram YouTube um, this session will be recorded so after this session you feel that you want to uh, maybe refer back or listen back to some of the information you can contact us okay you can click this um, take a, a scan and click here so that you can contact us then we can share with you the recording session okay so um, today's session we will be the agenda for today we'll be talking about what is the difference between Russell Group Universities and modern universities okay uh, besides that like for example how to choose what type of universities will be suitable for you and also to know about the routes that uh, both our speakers will be able to share with you okay so without further ado let's introduce the speaker for you today uh, firstly we have Kevin okay Kevin is from Intu Kevin could you introduce yourself Hi everyone, thanks for attending uh, this evening's uh, 
uh, webinar together with AECC. Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm from Intu. So we are a pathway provider that we offer a pathway program for you to progress to our partner universities. Okay, thank you so much, Kevin. Now, next, uh, we have Voon. Voon is from Kaplan. Voon, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Voon from Kaplan International Pathway. So we are also a pathway provider, which essentially um, provide pathway programs and foundation certificate international year one and pre-masters um, for you to progress, to start a foundation in the UK and then progress to the UK university that you would like to go to. Thank you. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so um, participants, if let's say you have any question, uh, feel free to um, write your question in the Q&A box, then we will come to your question towards the end of the session so that uh, we can complete most of it and then later on answer to your questions, okay? Um, so first of all, um, I understand that um, probably participant parents, um, even students would know that UK universities is categorized into Russell Group universities and also modern universities. So Kevin, could you share with us what is the definition between Russell Group Universities and modern universities? What are the uh, what what do they mean? Okay, I, I believe some of you, if you are familiar with the um, UK education, then you might have heard about the Russell Group University and also the others are categorized as uh, modern universities. And Russell Group uh, University, they are a group of 24 research uh, elite intensive universities that including very big names such as like Cambridge, Oxford, Imperial College, I'm sure you all know about this good name. So there are a group of 24 uh, uh, research intensive universities in the UK, okay? Whereas the other um, UK, uh, uh, UK university, they actually like to group themselves, okay? So they're actually a different, uh, many different type of groups. So the, the most uh, famous one would be Russell Group and there are some other like Millennium Group and things like that. So the other universities are considered modern university. So, um, yeah, I think we will talk about like the, uh, yeah. the advantages of uh, uh, having study in either group of the university later. Yes, yes, we do. Yeah. Um, so in particularly, Voon, can you please share, is, uh, share with us um, what is the benefit to study at Russell Group University? Um, okay, so um, the Russell Group University, I think, as uh, Kevin has mentioned, is very... Mm -hmm. Uh, research focus. They are very research focused. They are very high intense. I'm mean, very high intensity in terms of research and also I think in terms of funds for research. They have a lot as well. Um, so there is generally in terms of it's they because they are so highly ranked. They have a very high recognition among all the um employers, for example. So they tend to actually have a better international reputation. Um, probably because they have a lot of investment in all the different companies or in investment in terms of research as well. Um, so example, I think if you know, like University of Glasgow, for example, they work with uh, in Singapore, they work with SIT in Malaysia, have University of Nottingham. So all these things are one of the reasons why um, Russell Group Universities, they have a very high um, recognition by a lot of other employers. Um, but, um, you know, so, so a lot of the companies, I think, in the, in the Southeast Asia, for example, maybe smaller companies, if they're not familiar with UK universities, they will recognize Russell Group as a branding. So that's generally, um, a, you know, that's one of the benefits, really. But of course, it doesn't mean that this will, being in the Russell Group, mean that you have the best possible education. Of course, that's, that's true, but then it doesn't mean that, you know, if you go to non-Russell Group universities, you are not recognized by other employers. Um, so generally, yeah, this is, this is what I would say in terms of benefits for Russell Group University. Mm -hmm. Further to your answer, Woon, um, maybe you could share with us what is the benefit and also um, if let's say students are graduating from modern universities. Yeah, so modern universities, they have their own strengths as well, to be honest, um, really depends on what kind of program you want to study, you know, what do you intend to pursue in your career. So Russell Group Universities, normally they offer a very traditional course, you know, all the maybe like um, biosciences, maybe they offer engineering courses, computer science courses, but there's a lot of modern courses or niche area courses, they are not offered by Russell Group Universities. So for example, we look at like art and design, you know, animation or product design. Um, product design, we're not only referring to just design, but also the engineering part of it as well. You know, real estate, maybe even up to like wildlife conservation, fashion management, all these things are 
um, they have a niche area because the university, when they design these courses for modern universities, they are more geared towards a modern innovative uh, growth industry. So, you know, like for example, I give you an example. For example, one of our, one of our partners, for example, Bournemouth University, they, they are very popular for animation. They have a lot of their 50 plus graduates from there. They actually work on the 2009 Avatar movie. That's one of the one of the one of the kind of a, you know benefits or in terms of their popularity. So they, everyone have their own strengths. So that's why I would say these are probably one of the strengths of studying in the modern universities as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Moon. Um, um, as for Kevin, yeah, um, what do you see the difference between the teaching methods between Grasso Group universities and modern universities? And also uh, what puts them to the edge for students who wants to um, explore both options? Yeah, I would say that um, for Grasso Group University, as we keep emphasizing, it is a research-led uh, intensive university. So for students who actually uh, um, prefer like very traditional degrees and you know they are uh, want to focus on uh, research so Russell Group University they tend to taught students uh, academic skills like how to be critical thinker and research and also how to write effectively so uh, and it's also taught by some of the uh, leading researchers and academics in the field because the Russell Group University they always encourage the uh, their lecturer who are also the active researcher in the field, okay? So the active researcher, they will share their knowledge with the, the current students and, and you know, um, their, um, their research output and things like that. So for students who are looking on that type of uh, academia um, um, field, okay, that will be like beneficial to them. And also mm -hmm. like, you know, when they need help, when a student need help for their work, and students could speak to the experts who often have actually authored the books that they were in their reading list. So that are uh, the different teaching methods in Russell Group. Whereas for modern university, um, as Woon has also mentioned that, you know, if they actually offer a more um, a practical type of uh, degree or practical type of the field. So it will be more like practical opportunity, which in turn makes students uh, more employable. Yeah, okay. And not every subject leads itself uh, to research-led approach. So for example, like if you want to study a journalism degree, students may want to opt for a modern uh, university that offer practical experience and hand-on teaching. Like for example, one of our partner university, University of Stirling, they have the oldest journalism school uh, school in the university as a modern university that offer very good journalism uh, degree as well as like communication and media studies type of degree. So you can see that this, these are the, uh, the major differences between a, a Russell Group research-led university and a modern university. Mm. Kevin, can I summarize that for modern universities, it will emphasize more on the practical hands-on experience that um, lecturers and all students will be exposed to? Yeah, because it provides um, some specialist or modern uh, courses that you wouldn't find at more traditional institutions. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also tend to be more flexible in terms of the qualification that the assets Okay, they also bridge learning with practical experience. So for students who want a more vocational or tertiary education, a vocational tertiary education, they will provide a promising career opportunities in modern universities. Yep, that's great to know. Um, Voon, could you share with us um, a little more about Kaplan? So what does Kaplan has to offer, um, like for example, the routes to um, Russell Group universities or modern universities? Yep. So uh, basically at Kaplan, we, we offer the three main courses is actually foundation certificate, which is essentially uh, students that uh, they have a year 11 qualifications, which is, I mean, look, we're referring to like O-levels, SPM, uh, et cetera, those kind of qualifications, you can enter a foundation certificate. We also offer international year one. International year one courses actually is, is basically a year one equivalent program but perhaps a student does not have the requirement to enter direct entry to year one, but probably overqualified to go for a, to go for, um, you know, like a, like a 
foundation programs, so they can choose an international year one programs, although I have to say international year one program is not offered at every university. And um, the last one that we offered really is, um, so I just forgot to mention international year one also, essentially we are targeting students with a year 12 or year 13 qualifications. And lastly is pre-masters universities, uh, pre-masters courses, which pre-masters are essentially for students that you have not met the requirement to enter a university for a master's program. You can do a one year bridging courses and then allow you to go for the, the, pre the master's program. So essentially we offer about, we have about seven Russell Group universities across the, uh, across the UK that we have partnership with. Uh, we have uh, another eight modern universities as well on top of that. So most of the programs actually are taught in campus. Some of the colleges are run, I would say majority of courses are run by Kaplan, but some of the colleges are run by the university themselves, but Kaplan is responsible for the recruitment and counseling of the students. And a couple of them are actually run within our college in London. We call the Kaplan International College London. So the benefits really of this program is that students can do the program. Okay, once you start the program, it's a guaranteed progression into whether it's a year one, year two, or a master's program, depending on what route that you are going for. So that is really one of the benefits of doing the, you know, of doing our foundation or international year one or pre-master's program because they provide you, firstly, really is regarding a, a, a guaranteed progression to the university that you want. And um, they are also designed and also approved by the various partner universities, which is essentially designed to fill the gap between the current qualification you have and the knowledge uh, required to go for the universities. And when they do, in terms of the, the syllabus, they will look at what program you want to study in your bachelor's degree. So for example, if you want to do law at a university, maybe you will learn uh, courses like logic and critical thinking. Some of the universities have foundations of laws, you know, contemporary global issues. These are the things that are closely related to the degree that you wish to pursue at the university. So yeah, to some of those are really the, the kind of uh, benefits um, that, that we offer in the list of universities that we, we have as well. Mm. Vun, could you further share about International Year 1? So International mm -hmm. Year 1 is suitable for students who actually completed A-levels but didn't meet the entry requirement directly into universities. Is that, is that so, that particularly for these students, like giving them a second chance? Yes, that's correct. So for example, a university may require students to have, let's say, uh, we'll just give you an example, one of our partner universities, University of Birmingham, they we offer the International Year 1 in Engineering at our KIC uh, London campus, um, which essentially, if you want to enter an uh, engineering degree at University of Birmingham, they may require a 3A or 2A, 1B. But in order to enter the, the International Year 1, we, to be honest, we require 2Bs, uh, normally normal, normal, normal circumstances. But to exit, to enter Year 1 program, they will require students to have 55 to 60% from the international year one. Whereas when you are doing a international, a year one, direct year one program, then maybe the progression marks to a year two is normally only a 40%. That means you just have to pass the, the, the course itself or, or that particular year. So yeah, I mean, it's, it will give students a second chance for students mm -hmm. not meet the entry requirement, but they probably don't need to do another year or another academic year of foundation. Mm -hmm. That's great to know. I think you have provided a clear picture for our um, attendees today. And how about yourself, Kevin? Could you share with us um, what does Into offer and also what are the courses that are available that students can explore within in, in, Into? Yeah, for Into, we are also uh, the specialist in providing the pathway programs. So we do also have a foundation program for suitable for year 11 students, those who has completed like IGCSE or level, uh, SPM, uh, year 11 qualification, then yes, they can actually study the foundation program at our partner universities in the UK. And then also they will get a guaranteed progression to enter to the uh, degree year one. And we also will have the International Year One program, which is also suitable for Year 12 students, like A level students, STPM students, SMA DIGA students, those who couldn't make it direct entry to the universities, then they might use the Year 12 qualification to study the International Year One, which is actually equivalent to Year One of the degree. And once they meet the progression rates, then it's also guaranteed for them to continue their Year Two of the degree. We also have graduate diploma 
for those who uh, want to start to further their studies in a postgraduate uh, master degree in the UK, but they are not able to make it direct entry as well, they can do the bridging program, the graduate diploma, and then further to our partner universities. So for INTU, we have uh, four Russell Group University. There are University of Manchester, uh, University of Exeter, uh, Newcastle University, and Queen University of Belfast. These are all the uh, good rank uh, research led university. At the same time, we also have modern university as well. We have City University of London. We have Manchester Metropolitan University. We have University of East Anglia. We also have University of Stirling. So it's really depending on the courses, the, the degree that students want to study because like at Intu, um, we, we have the tailored program for students. So we have a different type of progress like foundation international year one graduate diploma for our students to progress to our um, partner universities. Okay, so we, uh, for INTO, we have our INTO center in each of our partner universities. So um, you can, while you are studying the foundations, the international year one program, you are already in the university setting. So you get yourself familiarized yourself with the university life, with the, um, you have full access to the uh, club and society, the facilities of the universities. For students who are not too sure uh, which university they want to go, but they have decided they want to study foundation or international year one at um, UK, and they want to progress to a U, uh, UK universities, they can also study at our Into London Centre and also our Into Manchester Centre. So Into London and Into Manchester, they will act as a choice centre for students. After they have completing, uh, completed the pathway programme, they can progress to um, the other universities in the UK. Mm. Kevin, I would like to ask, what is the, uh, why would you recommend foundation for IGCSE students or SPM students? What are the benefits if, let's say, students do choose to go for foundation? Yeah, so um, foundation, if you have already kind of know what degree you want to study, and then um, you also, like, you know, thinking of furthering your studies in the UK, and then you, it's better to start from a foundation because one good thing about foundation is that the duration is normally about nine months to a year. So once you finish the foundation nine months, you are already in the university. Uh, into, I forgot to mention, we do have a uh, level program as well. So we, we do have a level program, but uh, we want to let year 11 students uh, know that it's not necessary, you must study at A-level before you can enter to the university. So you can actually start from a foundation if you already know what you want to study and or you more or less also know which location, which university you want to progress to. So it's actually more beneficial to study a foundation instead. Okay, and also, as I mentioned to you, uh, for INTU, we have our INTU center in each of our partner university. So when you study, you uh, one good thing about foundation is that we will strengthen the student's academic English skill. We know that some of the IGCC students or SPM students, they are good in English, but then, you know, when you want to do the academic English, um, mm -hmm. it's totally different because that will really Correct. prepare yourself to further your studies. You know, you need to know how to do quotation, you need to know how to write your essay and things like that is different from the high school English. Yeah, so that is one thing that uh, we will emphasize in the uh, foundation program. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Um, Vaughn, for each university offer a wide range of courses. Like, I think this is like a, like a tip for students. So um, how should students determine which universities offers um, or best fit them? Like for example, if let's say a student are interested to do like architecture, how, how do you, how would you um, say which universities is suitable for them? Um, okay, so I would say that this is actually from, I mean, from the start, because every university have their own strengths and, and weaknesses. So it's a rather subjective question. So, um, I mean, to, to put it into context, Russell Group is traditionally very strong, as we mentioned, in very research intensive um, courses, whereas uh, modern universities, they have a very, um, they are more towards a unique and contemporary courses instead. So, um, for example, if you're looking at courses like, um, you know, art and design, um, game design, you know, those kind of program or even uh, journalism, like I mentioned, you cannot find those on Russell Group University. So, for example, if you are looking at law program, maybe then we have a number of universities that are 
probably quite um, quite strong. There are many Russian group universities are very strong in it. Like for example, Bristol, you know, University of Nottingham or University of Birmingham, for example. Um, if you're looking at courses that are more towards um, architecture, for example, architecture is, um, they have both, you know, most Russell, all Russell Group and also modern universities do offer architecture course. So we have, for example, UW Bristol, University of Brighton or University of Liverpool, they offer an architecture program, okay, that are also recognized in the UK and most other countries as well. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think eventually I would, we would normally recommend students is you have to Decide university sort of based on the wide variety of factors because the factors could be, for example, looking at ranking, you know, depends on, on the certain subjects. Some universities, like for example, um, if you want to look for an architecture program, you will see some of the modern universities also in a very high rank. Not only the Russell groups are in the high rank, but even, even some of the modern universities are in the high rank as well in architecture. But if you look at art and design, you probably cannot find any, any modern uh, Russell group universities within that particular rank. So you can only look at the, the modern um, the modern universities um, side of things as well for, for those particular programs. So yeah, I mean, when you have to determine what kind of university that will fit you the best, um, it's really good to look at, you know, to look at what are the things that you're looking at because there are also another thing that may be different is a Russell Group universities, they are focused a lot on exams. A lot of their programs maybe have a fit. 60-70% of their courses are assessed by exam, but um, a modern university is probably is the other way around. They may have a 60% of uh, assessment based on um, uh, assignments, and then a 40% on exam or 70 to 30. It depends on what kind of modules that you are doing. So you could also base that as a decision factor because some students are very good in exam. Some people are not good in exam as well. So eventually it's about whether you will be able to excel in your particular um, in a particular area. And your results eventually will determine how employable you are, you are as well at the end. Yeah. Uh, I would like to add. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. because um, to, I think during our career, like Kali Boon, we have met a lot of uh, yeah. students from Southeast Asia. <laughs> we totally understand that Southeast Asia yeah. students and their parents are very ranking conscious. Okay, they all just look at the big name Russell Group and things like that. Okay, but mm -hmm. as Boon has mentioned, there are actually a lot of many other factors for you to consider as well when choosing a university to apply. Like for example, yes, I know your the university ranking, but again, back to our previous uh, 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 discussion, what kind of mm -hmm. academic background you actually want? You really want a research led mm -hmm. or more practical? So yeah. University ranking, then you will, you will need to uh, look at it. This is one of the factors. But at the same time, you might want to look at the subject ranking because certain um, modern university they might not uh, on in the top list of the ranking, but their subject ranking, they are very good. Say, for example, like you talk about architecture, like Manchester Metropolitan University as modern university, they are top seven in the UK for architecture. You see, so the subject ranking also is something that you, you want to uh, look into it as well. Okay, and also the location, whether you want to study at a city campus, you want to be in the big city, London, Manchester, Newcastle, you know, or you want to be at a, a beautiful uh, uh, greenery city campus, uh, sorry, uh, uh, a huge campus, you know, you, you, you want to have like uh, greens, Okay, you, you have access to, to lake and things like that. So is, is the location, is the uni, university location, is the city location as well. And then on top of that, um, we, we look at tuition fees, affordability. Mm -hmm. okay. yep. Russell yeah. Group yeah. Rank University to be... tend to be more expensive. That is the, that is the fact. Okay. Mm -hmm. And modern university, the tuition fees might be affordable to you and also the scholarship opportunities, yeah, living expenses. So these are all, all different type of factors that actually um, for you to consider, not just about the university ranking or just about the name. You know, some road rank university might not be highly popular, but they might just, just be able to tick all your boxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some ranking also tend to measure university reputation through the opinions of like employers, few experts, and alumni, which may not be the accurate uh, projection of reality as well. 
So the other mm -hmm. factors you might another alternative ranking such as like um, students reviews and also mm -hmm. most importantly international student satisfaction survey, because all of us all of you will be international students. So this type of uh, review comments might also help with a more relevant gauge on whether the university will deliver the student experience that you wanted. Mm. Thanks, Kevin, for the add-on. Yeah, I would like to know out of all the universities that you represent, is there any universities that you would like to highlight, especially the courses? Because, you know, sometimes we come across that parents ask us, what is the course that next time my kids will have a better future or like have like wishing us to have a crystal ball to tell them that, oh, this, this, this courses will be suitable for you or is there any um, uh, like bright uh, future? Like, yeah, so is there any universities or courses that you like to highlight? Um, I will say that don't listen to, <laughs> to your hairdresser or your auntie's recommendation. It's, it's really your future, your interest, your career. Okay? It's nothing to do with them after all. Okay? So it's, it's really your interest, what you like to do, what are you strong at? You know, in your high school, what are the subjects that you're really, really interested in and you can perform well? So that is actually the most important things that, you know, for you to really choose of what degree, what field. So if you were to ask me, like Kali said, I don't have a crystal ball. I cannot, I'm not a fortune teller. I can't tell you which degree will earn a lot of money for you. Or, you know, it will be like, you know, very popular. We are talking about like after three or four years. So I'm not a fortune teller. I, I cannot, I cannot guess. So it's really, really depending on your own interest. What are you good at? What is your strength? that you know you really want to further in your academic and also even your career later okay so of course um as i also mentioned you know good rank university the subject ranking are also very important that you might want to look into like for example for like, uh, our intro partner university like just now we talk about architecture we have a manchester metropolitan mm -hmm. the subject rank is very, very good like for newcastle university one of our partner university they are top 100 in the world for architecture in terms of like art and design then we have like also manchester metropolitan university which is the modern university ranked number seven in the uk yeah so um, different subject like um uh, say, for example, international development, which is something like international relations, like University of East Anglia, another modern university, rank 11 in the world. So you see, we look at the different subject rankings. So, no, so don't really just look at the overall university ranking or the Russell Group ranking and things like that. Okay. For pharmacies, um, University of Manchester, 14 in the world, um, top 100 in the world and top three in the UK, Queen University Belfast is a good choice. So we look at different subject ranking, then yeah, we might be able to uh, recommend uh, different type of uh, uh, which university that might be suitable for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks Kevin. How about Woon? Um, within the Kaplan Partners University, is there universities that um, you would like to shout out or what are the courses that you think is like pretty interesting for the young kids nowadays? <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think we, I totally agree with, firstly, I want to say I very much agree with what Kevin said earlier. Really, it's about yourself. It's not really about choosing what other people think is better because I think we need to stress that all the universities that we represent, they are all uh, what we call the, the public universities in the UK. They are not Mickey Mouse universities. Whether they are ranked number one or ranked 120 in the UK, they are still a, a proper universities with a lot of very professional and experts within that particular field. So even if the university is ranked top 100 in the UK instead of number 10 in the UK, it doesn't mean that it's, it's, not, it's not good. Okay, I think that's something that we really need to stress to our students as well, uh, or, the, or, the, or, the, or the parents, maybe that's something that you can also look into that. So, um, I mean, going back to what you asked as well, in terms of what universities that we, that we offer, I think we're looking at, for example, law is very popular, I think, among our students in uh, Malaysia, in Singapore particular, you know, then we have University of Bristol, University of Nottingham, uh, University of Birmingham, they are all top 20 in the UK in terms of law ranking. Um, we also have uh, students that always ask for like, um, maybe like engineering and computer science related. Then we have, you know, for example, we have Liverpool, we have University of Glasgow, are pretty good in that as well. 
there are also some quite niche courses, I would say. For example, hospitality and, and management. Maybe it's not something that is popular now because hospitality or, or tourism is a bit of a, a difficulty now due to COVID-19. But if before that, for example, Bournemouth University is still, even, even now, they are still top 10 in the world for hospitality. So yeah, I mean, a lot of people maybe may not heard of where is Bournemouth. Um, so, but they have their own very good subject ranking as well in that sense. Um, there are also very niche courses which we offer like physiotherapy. We have some students that like physiotherapy. Um, we have Nottingham, we have Birmingham, you know, we are very good in, in physiotherapy. And um, um, we also have, for example, like, like business obviously is the most popular because everybody wants to do business courses and accounting and finance, um, whether it's finance or economics, they also sort of fall under business degree uh, level. Um, whereas I think all of our Russell Group universities are pretty good rank, uh, good rank like Bristol, Birmingham, Nottingham. You know, a lot of them are easily top 20 in different subject areas. Okay. Um, so yeah, and then lastly, I think we also get students that are asking for like art and design. Uh, but art and design also we're looking at what kind of art design you're looking for because not all universities offer the same kind of art and design. Whether you're looking for a product design, whether you are looking for a, a fashion design, or you're looking for just an interior design. So then we have like Nottingham Trend. Um, uh, we have we use Westminster, which are quite popular in that in that sense. So I kind of hopefully I cover a, a couple of interesting subject areas um, on on the in the popular in the UK. Yep, thanks, Boon. Um, it, probably you can share a bit more about for the Foundation International Year One courses. Um, when is their intake or when is their application deadline so that should students can take note? Okay, so um, for our courses, uh, we have the two main intakes, which is one in the September, or we call the autumn intake. We also have a January intake. Um, some of the courses have a fast track in fast track foundation, which is like in March twenty twenty two. Um, but the is the eventually the idea is when you are starting in whether it's September or January, you are able to progress to university in uh, let's say you start in September twenty twenty one, uh, or January twenty twenty two, you will be able to progress to the university that you want to go in September twenty twenty two. So that is the two main intakes that we have. There are as I mentioned, there are a couple of smaller intakes which is um, a, a standard two semesters program, okay? And in terms of application deadline, it really depends on what kind of course you're looking for. For majority courses, we don't really have a deadline as long as you have sufficient time to enroll yourself. And I think because in, in COVID time now, we can, our students can now uh, enroll online and then only travel to the UK later. Um, but in, um, you know, in, in normal circumstances, they would probably be expected to kind of to apply and then apply, I mean, apply for the visa itself. So we don't have a very hard deadline in that sense. Um, but there are also courses that you might want to look up for because of quota. So for example, physiotherapy, uh, which is another quite popular courses. Physiotherapy, for example, our partner universities, majority of them have only five to eight quotas per universities. So that means that uh, most of the quotas will run out probably by January, the year before, if you go for September intake or or, or whether you go to September or January intake. So they run up very, very quickly right be, before the course starts, uh, which means if you want to apply later, you can only apply for the next academic year. So it, as I said, it really just depends on whether the course you apply is a quota course, but traditionally, most courses don't have a quota. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's great to know. Um, does this apply to INTO as well, Kevin? Yeah, so for INTO, our pathway program, the major intake is September as well. So as one mentioned, you get in September to do the pathway program, Foundation International Year 1 or Graduate Diploma. And then by the next year, September, you'll be able to progress to, the, uh, to our partner universities. So September is a major intake and January, uh, which is a spring intake, we do also have uh, some... Uh, uh, Popular courses also will have January intake and, of, uh, and we have also a March intake, which is accelerated program, but it's only for certain uh, courses and also certain at certain um, partner universities. So the major intake is still September and January. And we also don't have a very uh, particular specific uh, application deadline. But I know that Malaysian students or Singaporean students always like last minute, okay, which, um, 
Yeah, even though we don't have the deadline, but I will say that we still encourage you to, to put in the application um, as soon as possible. Like uh, for those on campus face to face uh, courses that I will normally encourage students to put in uh, at least a month before the class start. So you have enough time for you to uh, decide on the acceptance, to settle your acceptance, <laughs> and then get the necessary document to apply your visa because you you do take time to apply visa as well. So you have to count that in. So for me, I would just mention that a month, we, it's not a, 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 a really a deadline, but I would encourage them, you know, not to rush, not to rush your agent like Kali, you know, last minute, you know. So it's like a month before. And we also, because of um, the pandemic, we also have courses that uh, the students can allow to start online for our September, this coming September intake. So for, for online, then I will say at least um, two weeks before the class starts, okay? Put in your application, get the acceptance letter and things like that. Because even though you are doing online, you don't have to apply visa, you don't have to book your flight ticket and things like that. You still, we still need to have time to set up your online account and things like that. So again, don't, um, don't do it too last minute. And uh, for the pathway program, um, it's 100% attendance. So once the class starts, you have to make sure that you, know, you are on time and things like that, you start your classes and things like that. So we, we, we don't really want students to miss out anything. So it's better for them to ap apply and accept as soon as possible. Yeah, I think the next question will be, um, at the moment, can Malaysian students, um, Singaporean students, Indonesian students actually travel to the UK? Yeah, um, for entering UK right now, they are actually following a traffic light system and so happened that the three countries that you just mentioned are all in a different list. <laughs> so we start with yeah we start with the easiest one which is Singapore students if you are flying from Singapore directly entering to the um, England um, you are under green list so there are other uh, green list countries as well as long as you are in the green list country for at least 10 days okay so what you have to do is very standard before you uh, before you fly to the England you have to take a COVID-19 test three days before you travel to England. And also you have to book and pay the COVID-19 test to be taken after arrival in England. And also you have to complete a passenger locator form. So these are all the things that you have to do before you fight. I'm talking about green lease, yeah? And mm -hmm. after you arrive in, in England, you must also uh, test, uh, take the COVID-19 test on, on or before day two. And for green list, uh, from those who came in from green list countries, you do not need to quarantine unless the test result is uh, positive. Whereas for Malaysia, we are under amber list countries. There are other also, you know, uh, uh, other amber list countries as well. So for Malaysian students, uh, it's the same. You have to take COVID test three days before, you know, book the COVID uh, test kit. And um, you have to also do the passenger locator form. But for those from uh, Amberlis, you will have to quarantine at home or in the place you are staying for 10 days. So say, for example, you are staying at our into accommodation, then yeah, for those from Amberlis, you can quarantine in our accommodation for 10 days. So in the 10 days, uh, you will have to do uh, two COVID tests. And if you are clear, then after 10 days, you will be free. Whereas if you are from Indonesia, unfortunately, Indonesia students right now, um, you're under the red, red list country. Um, so for above 18 students, yes, you can um, travel. Okay, it's, a, it's quite similar as Amber list students, but you have to quarantine in the government uh, managed hotels. So you cannot quarantine in your own accommodation or your home. Okay, so if you are from the red list, then you have to quarantine, you have to pay for a package, okay, and then um, once you arrive, they will escort you to the, um, the hotel that they dedicated for quarantine, and then it's the same, you have to do two COVID tests during that time, and once um, you are negative, then yeah, after 10 days, you are free, then you can travel to the next destination. But for under 18 students from the red list country, it's going to be a bit uh, more tricky and difficult because you will have to travel with your guardian. 
and because you have to quarantine together with your guardians. So that make it a little bit um, challenging. So if you're under 18 from the red list, then yeah, it might be a bit, little bit challenging for you because you might not be able to travel by your own. And um, your guardian also actually will need to have a valid um, visa to enter UK. Mm. So it's not just a visitor and things like that. So it's going to be a little bit tricky for under 18 from red list country. But uh, we do have online courses. We, we do have uh, courses that you can start online. So for students from red list under 18, then we will encourage them to um, do online. Mm, thanks, Kevin. Um, I think I've covered most of the questions that we've pre-prepared. Probably we open to the floor to, uh, to answer the questions that they have um, sent in. Okay, so first question that we have. Um, Voon, on your opinion, can you name top five best Russell groups university? Okay, so um, we can't anticipate these kind of questions that will actually come out. I mean, to be honest, which is the best university, which is the, the worst university is, as I said, very subjective. There is tons of different ranking as well. We don't, we're not going to say one ranking is better than another. There's no such thing. So, I mean, if you're looking at, for example, um, obviously Cambridge, Oxford would probably be the best. Imperial, definitely one of the best ones. But uh, that, that may not be the most realistic options for majority students. Of course, there will be students that are very good and they will qualify, but there will be a lot of students that may not uh, be able to, um, to sort of qualify for those universities. So on top of that, really, you have the likes of like University of Bristol, you have the likes of University of Nottingham, University of Liverpool, um, University of uh, Birmingham, and I'm sure Kevin will have a number of universities that they partner with as well that also are considered as the best universities. So I think honestly, this kind of this question, which is this, what we can tell you, okay, there is whether it's which is the best, which is the worst rankings are there's too many rankings out there that can tell you all the different stories. So I hope that kind of answers a bit of the 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 inquiry uh, the student have. Yep. Yeah, thanks. Um, next question. If let's say a student actually um, decided to do a diploma in actuarial science, uh, which universities um, the students can progress to? Um, I'll address this to Kevin. You mean the students is doing a diploma in yeah, actuarial science right now? Um, uh, yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you talk about actuarial science, uh, one of our Best ranked university will be City University of London. They are second in the world for actuarial science. So if you are talk, talking about actuarial science, but one thing for actuarial science is that um, they don't have a mid, uh, mid uh, what, they don't have the second year entry or, you know, because for, for those students who are doing a diploma right now, I understand that you might be thinking you can, you know, do some credit transfer and you might, you know, start from year two or year three instead of start all over again. But unfortunately, uh, actuarial science, because of the accreditation, there is no um, year two or year three entry. So even if you finish your diploma in actuarial science, locally you might have to start all over again okay um yeah you can apply straight away to city university of london and it's, it's really depending on them whether they will recognize the diploma in actuarial science or worse come to worse we do have the foundation in actuarial science for you at into then you can study uh, our foundation in actuarial science and progress to this uh, very good rank uh, city university of london for actuarial science Mm, on top of that, there's this question where, um, Kevin, actuarial science is con considered traditional or modern? Actuarial science? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I would say in between, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have a particular, I don't have a straightforward answer for that, unfortunately, but actuarial science, yes, is has been there for quite some time, but not until mm -hmm. that traditional, like for example, law, English, and things like that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yep, yep, no worries about it. Um, Voon, next question. Um, is there any scholarship offered to excellent students, um, like this particular student, Idina, she actually scores nine A's in her SPM. Okay, so um, our scholarships really depends on what college you are looking at. So majority of our colleges actually, they offer scholarships from 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. Okay, but we do have a certain university, for example, University of York, 
Um, they offer special scholarships, which is between 3,000 to 5,000. Normally, students, if they come with nine A's, they may qualify for 5,000 pounds, although it's a first come, first serve basis because it's not an unlimited scholarship. They only have about less than five uh, quotas available. Um, so they we do have this kind of a scholarship, for example, for students with the SPM um, nine A's or, or above. Um, for example, then we're looking at uh, units of Essex, they offer 3,000 pounds of scholarships, but the other universities or majority universities, we are offering somewhere between 1,000 to 1,500 pounds uh, for the scholarships. Yep, that's great to know. Um, for okay. Kevin, um, um, what are the cities in the UK that is um, considered lower living expenses and also more affordable in terms of tuition fee? Probably yeah. you can name just one, one city. Yeah. yeah, if you talk about affordable, affordability, like, you know what, uh, when I mentioned this, uh, I will really, yeah. really uh, strongly recommend the Queen University Belfast. Okay, mm -hmm. Queen University Belfast is located in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is still part of the UK, yeah. So, and, and Belfast, Belfast is actually the capital city of uh, Northern Ireland. So, having said that, you know, you 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 might be wonder, you might be thinking, um, staying in the capital city isn't it going to be like you know a lot more uh, expensive? But not really in Belfast. Okay, so uh, Belfast living expenses is is very affordable. It's already in the studies. Like you know, the students has already uh, mentioned about that in in 2019 in 2020. Belfast is actually the best city in terms of affordability. The living expenses is actually very very affordable, affordable. And for Queen University Belfast as a Russell Group University compared with the other Russell Group University, Queen University Belfast their tuition fees is also tend to be much more affordable if compared with the other Russell Group University. Okay, so in terms of affordability, yes, I will say that, you know, Queen University Belfast is definitely one of your top choice if you are thinking of affordability, uh, affordability and you are at the same time study at a good Russell Group University. Mm, that's good to know. I think this is like a win-win situation for students. Yeah. yeah. Um, next question, I think this will be for Woon. Um, what if um, students take a course but did not meet the entry requirements because they did not take one of the particular subject that is required for the course? Um, does these students um, get, to, get to have a chance to take the course? I think it would be like, yeah. is there like a second chance? Yeah. Um, I, think it, I think it depends on what context we are looking at. Okay, so... Mm. If you are looking at a student that, for example, um, is looking to enter, uh, um, I, just example, if the student is looking to study um, uh, science courses, engineering courses, um, but did not have a physics in A-levels, for example, okay, then we do offer, for example, um, the, the foundation certificate, which if you have, for example, physics in your SPM or O-levels, then you could potentially still sit for the foundation in a certificate leading to an engineering program, okay? Um, if you are doing, for example, business or law program, there is no prerequisite for those kind of courses. So it doesn't really matter what subjects you have been taking before during your high school or your college time, you will still be able to enter the, the courses that we, we offer at the very least. Um, so there is definitely second chance, but um, we cannot really give you a yes or no answer because it depends on what kind of context you are looking at. It depends on the qualification of the students, depending on what course you're looking at. And, um, and it's, it's also not only the, the current qualification, but also probably previous qualifications as well. They will look at all these as a factors before making a decision on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, there's a question by Ji Yan. Um, are the local foundation programs of universities in Malaysia eligible for the degree program in all UK universities? I think probably this one, um, Kevin or Woon, both of you, either one of you can answer this. Um, I, yes, we always get this kind of uh, very common um, questions, you know, whether if I study locally a foundation in Malaysia or, you know, in your home country, can I use it to uh, study in the UK? Um, I would say that the foundation program that offered by your local institution are um, more or less geared towards their own degree program. Okay, it's not actually preparing your for you to enter to an overseas uh, institution. Okay, so um, again, it depends of the different universities. In this case, 
modern university might tend to be able to accept um, the local foundation because as I mentioned earlier, modern university in terms of uh, uh, entry requirements that can be more flexible. Whereas if you are thinking of going to a Russell Group University, in this case, it might be challenging, okay? I cannot say because I, I don't represent um, uh, all of them. So there might be some university we uh, will be accepting the local foundation, but it's really, really case by case basis. So yeah, I would I mean, say that, yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to add a little bit as well on top of what Kevin has said is um, if you are really looking at certain universities that you really want, we definitely recommend you to study the foundation that is located in the campus because that is the guaranteed foundation. If you're doing a foundation, like, like I give you an example, I, we had, I'm sure Kevin also has as well. We have students that study a foundation in Malaysia, couldn't get into the university that they want, and then they come back and do a foundation. I even had a student very recently study a, a Australian university foundation. It's not accepted by the university they, 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 they are looking for. They still come back and do the university, the foundation that they are looking at because it's a Russell Group. So Russell Group generally is also tougher. And um, as put into another context, which is something that from our perspective, we get a lot because we represent uh, University of Nottingham, which also, I mean, we only represent for the pathway course located in the UK, but we get a lot of questions. Like if I study a foundation in Malaysia campus, do I get guaranteed entry into the, the UK campus? The answer is no. So don't, normally universities will say they will look at it on a case-by-case -case basis, even though it's a sort of a same university, but then they are still considered as an external foundation for the UK standard because, again, because it's Russell Group, the entry requirement normally is a bit more uh, stringent. They look at a lot more factors as well. And also the quota, I think, uh, the courses, they are definitely giving priority to students that are already in the system of the university, which is essentially the foundation on the campus itself. So I think if you are looking at, basically if you're looking at high rank university, it's something that you maybe need to reconsider on that. Yep, yeah. Um, one last question that we have over here from Edina. She would like to know if, let's say, would she be able to do a degree, um, an overseas degree, if let's say she does a diploma in Malaysia? Um, um, probably, Tuvun, yep. Yeah, I mean, I think this question is uh, quite similar to one of the questions that were being asked earlier. Yeah, uh, correct. Mm -hmm. If you are looking to do um, a degree overseas, and but you have a diploma, again, normally universities will look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. To go to Russell Group Universities, normally to enter year two or year three is going to be very, very tough. Okay, of course, there are some in May, but generally speaking, they, are, they will have a very strict requirement on that. So um, it's possible. Um, but whether you will be able to get into it is another matter because it's not guaranteed. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Um, I think that's all for the questions for today. Yep. Yeah. So it was fun learning um, the journey, the pathway to enter into um, Russell Group Universities to modern universities from both Kevin and Voon. Um, however, I have one thing to share with um, the audience today, which we have, um, I think students do come across this thing called um, English requirements. So both universities will need to know that um, all the students will need to meet English requirements. So over here, uh, we have this PTE. So PTE is another alternative English test that students can go for. Um, there is PTE, and PTE UKVI, which is accepted by most of the universities in um, UK as well. Um, so uh, for this um, for this um, English test, it is an alternative. If let's say students doesn't want to take IELTS or doesn't want to take TOEFL, because for this test, there's um, some benefits where it is fair and very fast in terms of the results, and also it is pretty secure in terms of because for this uh, this test is actually powered by AI. So this. Um, this test is actually also recognized by um, 99 universities in, uh, in UK. So if let's say students who doesn't want to opt for IELTS or TOEFL, um, you can go for this test because um, actually today we have something good to share with you guys where if let's say you are interested to um, take um, an example test, we have this 10% discount for students. Uh, so you, if you are interested, you can just click on the, um, you can scan the QR code over here. So once you have scanned the QR code, then um, you can take a sample test for free and then after you have completed your practical materials you also um, entitled a 10% discount 
Okay. Yeah. So um, some of you, if you are interested, you can have a look into it. All right. So next, okay, for Indonesian students, um, we would like to address that if let's say you are newly enrolled students, you will be eligible for this cashback of uh, Indonesian dollar, um, roughly around six million. That if let's say you are enrolling to UK universities in September and or January, so you're entitled for that. Uh, you can contact our um, ACC Indonesia office, so our colleagues and um, counselor will be able to get back to you in terms of this cashback, all right? So um, lastly, okay, so uh, at the end of this um, talk, this webinar, there will be a survey. So after this session, there will be a five question survey. Um, you can answer this um, survey and then you'll be entitled, um, you will be entering into a lucky draw pool. So one lucky attendees will be contacted to win a, if you're from Singapore, will be Sing dollar, $30, uh, $30 for off grab voucher, uh, grab credits. And in Malaysia, you'll be entitled for 80 ringgit grab credits. Uh. So feel free to uh, fill up the survey uh, after this session or you're also getting an email um, after this. All right. So this over here, we would like to share that. Um, these are all the contact details for all our offices in Malaysia, um, Singapore, Philippines, Indonesia, and Thailand. Um, so if let's say you have any questions, any queries, or any um, any questions that you have after this session or you want us to share with you this webinar um, you can let us know so that uh, we can uh, contact you or you can just scan this code over here that it will lead you to making an appointment with us all right okay so uh, that's all for today thank you so much everyone yeah so if let's say um, you have any question feel free to drop us an email or scan the code and the rest of the things okay um, other than that um, for students who are interested for other topics, all right, you may um, join other topics. The next topic that we have will be involving Safe Life, Create Smile, which is by University of New South Wales about medicine and University of South Australia about pharmacy. So the next session will be on the 20th of August, 2 p.m. All right, so that's all for today. Thank you so much, Kevin and Boone for the session. All right, so uh, we have also uh, put in the link in our um, chat box. You can go to that page to see that what are the topics that you are interested in and also what are the um, areas you are interested in so that you can register for the session. Okay, yeah, so make sure to follow our Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, and also um, social channels that you can chat with us. All right, that's all for tonight. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for the attendees. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Voon. Um, and thank you, everyone. And have a pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.